Okay. I think we're live. Hi, Creed. Well, hi, Rain. Can everyone hear us out there? Hi, everybody on uh, Soul Boom YouTube. Welcome to Creed Thoughts Live. <laughs> Maybe this needs to be a regular show. I don't know. I don't know about that. It feels disembodied. We don't hear anybody. There's nobody behind the cameras. I know. There's. We've got a cam. Oh, look at us. That's on a 20-second delay right there, uh, so don't let that throw you. I'm, it's not going to. I won't even look um, at it. Uh, Creed. Yes. I love you. I love you. You are one of my favorite human beings that has ever walked the planet. <laughs> right back at you. They not only broke the mold when they made you, they stomped on it, they uh, ground it up, they spread it out over the Indian Ocean. And smoked it. They smoked it and they pooped it out. Yes. Um, that's what they did with the mold. I'm a nice fiber. Go on. You, are, you, you, you provide a lot of nice <laughs> internal fiber. I do. And... Um, you were just talking to me. Um, we want to get to know you a little bit. We're going to hear a song, folks. Okay. Um, we're going to take your questions. Make sure that you subscribe to the Soul Boom YouTube channel because that's what we're going to be promoting. This is the sound stage where I record my new Soul Boom podcast and some shows like Wisdom Dump that you're going to be a part of. Bada boom. You're gonna so boom. You're gonna dump some wisdom. Oh, I will. on my face. I'm gonna dump a lot of things on you're gonna, you, my friend. You're gonna dump so much, and uh, we uh, would love to hear from you. So, if you subscribe, then you can put a comment and a question, and then we will be able to answer your questions. And we'd love to hear from you. Uh, and thanks for participating, Soul Boom. It's a podcast and show about the human being, the human experience. It's you know roughly based on my uh, book of the same title. Uh, there's gonna be philosophy, spirituality, mental health, um, a lot of things uh, that I address in the book. We're gonna be able to dig into in another way. Uh, Angela Kinsey has been recorded. We're gonna have a wonderful episode with Angela Kinsey. Lots of great authors and movers and thinkers. But enough of me yapping, Creed. Yes, mental health is not the reason I'm here, folks. Go ahead, though. Well, it's the reason they let you out for the day and let you out of the straitjacket. Thank you for that. Um, you just talked about writing a big chunk of your memoir. Yes. 30,000 words. Yes. And you're getting ready to send that out. out? It's called The Oboe King. And uh, I'm very, very excited about it. And I think it's gonna touch a lot of base because a lot of people don't know I played oboe as a young person, switched to guitar. I think the oboe king would be really, oboe king would great. be perfect. Yes. So are there any stories that you recently put pen to paper from this upcoming memoir? And uh, what, is there anything you can share with us now that doesn't give away too much about the book? Uh, well, there is, um, there is an episode that we were talking about trauma and things okay, in yeah, life that yeah. define one. I was working for a catering company. Where? Uh, for Lori's, Lori's Catering. And I was doing... Here in L.A.? Here in L.A. Okay. I was doing uh, D movies that were trying to be C movies. It was like low tables. And I was in this little van and I was crawling over every So day. not catering at a party, no, but catering, catering for a for movie. Film. Yeah. For a film. And this, this is a point where I would go and I'd crawl out with these tables and chairs mm -hmm. And, and I was in my, it was in my late 50s, my back was breaking, and one day I was on set and some people came through, I think it was Eric Roberts and a bunch of other people and uh, from this film, and they knew who I was because the, his wife knew, and they said, well, how can you do it? How can you be they a They knew rock who star? he was in yeah, terms of His being... wife knew. Yeah. His wife knew that yeah. I was a rock star. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden I just had this moment of, not even epiphany, just like this, the 11th hour of the soul where I was, I had just dropped, I just dropped and said, what the, what is the point? Why am I doing this? You know, why, why do I continue? But I kept, kept having the, the vision when I would meditate or run of all this love coming into my life. So I get, kept, kept the faith. I kept the faith. And one day my back was just starting to break and I couldn't do the job anymore. And I called a friend of mine. He gave me some background work on Bernie Mac within a, just a few months. Ken so you went from through. catering shitty, crappy Horrible. action movies, the worst, the worst, doing the low rent catering. Yep. You were Rat probably baking. getting a, like eleven bucks an hour oh. or something like that. Yeah, a little more than that. 
12, okay. 12 and a half. Okay. <laughs> uh, 14 bucks an yeah, hour. Yeah, baby. Um, you, it was backbreaking work. Horrible. You were my age now. Uh, I'm and, late and, 50s. And, people, and I just couldn't couldn't seem to get a break. And I was, but I was still in class. I was still going to class, okay. putting up a scene every week. Wow, so yeah. still in acting class. Oh, yeah. Where were, oh, you, yeah. where were, you, were you studying acting? I had studied uh, after the grassroots with uh, the Sanford Meisner Method with uh, Charles Conrad over mm-hmm. in Coinga, and I liked, I liked the Meisner Method a lot. Mm. So I still use it when I, when I, yeah. that's what I use. Uh, and then I worked with a guy named, uh, with ha- uh, Happy, it was Handicapped Artist, where I worked with the people who had lost arms, were paraplegic. We worked with people like that. You, need, you had lost your mind. At that time. So and they, I'd lost that, my mind. They lost, lost their lost, arms. I'd lost, your, lost my mind. mind. I had done that. And then um, the, the, the uh, Celtic Arts Center, um, Sarah Fulton Group. And okay. I worked with them. We had a lot of visiting act, uh, directors and people came in. And we'd, we'd film it. And that was good for me. And I kept seeing the work. I yeah. knew the work was good. I knew I could do it. Yeah. I mean, I had the chops. And I was a drama major in college. And all were you sudden, auditioning at all? Did you have an agent or anything? No, no, yeah. I was just doing it. I just felt I just didn't have the the confidence. And then all of a sudden, I got on the show, uh, Bernie Mac, and as he, a background actor, as a background actor, they kept putting me in stuff. I kept making people laugh. And all of a sudden, I realized, you know what? I'm pretty funny. And all of a sudden, I started <laughs> realizing that I was funny. Yeah. And Ken Quapas came on, and he thought I was. So funny. he was a, Ken Quapas directed the pilot of The Office. Yep. He directed like 10, 15 episodes of The Office. The finale as well. Uh, great TV director. Oh. Um, with the Larry Sanders show, one of the original yes. directors of that. And he directed a lot of Bernie Mac, which was a really funny it's show. Really People funny don't show. remember. No, but Bernie, it doesn't, Bernie's they don't a great stream guy. it anymore. That was a funny show. I don't know. I don't know. I, I always liked it. Bernie was incredible. He, he really liked me and he kept using me for bits. I, you'll see me, if you go back to old Bernie Mac stuff, I'm always in the background doing some stupid Charlie Chaplin bit or Jacques Tati stumble or one of these things, with yeah. typical Creed, early Creed face, you know, yeah. to run the background. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's that, and the rest of the story is there. And Ken Quapas. Knew who you were from the grassroots. He had his assistant go to Amoeba to get a bunch of albums, and, I, and he signed them for him. He gave me his number. Unprecedented. And I called him when I heard about the uh, the Ricky Gervais thing. The office. Uh, the American Workplace, yeah. as, as it was called. <clears throat> right. Yeah. And so Ken Quapas got you on as background, because I remember early on shooting, maybe the pilot, but one of the first uh, episodes, and... And Ken Quap, and Ken Quap is his talks like this, and he's like, um, "Hey, hey, everybody, uh, how's it going? Hey, I want, you, I want you to meet someone really special here. This is uh, Creed Bratton. He's at, he was in the grassroots. He's actually a a rock star musician and a uh, brilliant uh, songwriter, and he's going to be doing uh, background back here in the in the back tables, something like that. Something like that." And uh, then we did six episodes. Yeah. By the third weekend, I realized now I had bypassed the casting system by doing. Right. I, I caught. I, I wrote my own bit. I created this character. I submitted it to to Greg Daniels. Yeah. And uh, and what were you thinking when you created the character of Creed? I was thinking the. Well, how were you perceiving of that original character? Because he he morphed into something different. He did. But... He morphed into something. The original guy was a guy who over OD'd, and ended up on a Greyhound bus. He didn't OD. He he passed out on a bus. Ended up in a dumpster, and uh, Ed Trucks found him and brought him and gave him a jump <laughs> job, which I couldn't do. Which I do, and that was the idea. That was the idea. And by the way, I don't know about you, but the rest of the cast resented the fact that that I completely bypassed the casting because they all had to audition you guys had to audition i yeah. just i just did it i by, don't by, i don't think come on but by knowing the way, that ensemble just, listen are you saying that you were by resented the, by the way uh i had more movie credits than that than the whole cast combined when i first came on albeit mostly silent films in black and white yep but still <laughs> still not the, so the, many the, talkies the, the numbers the numbers add up the number, so um, I, was, I was building up to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All very right. Good. Very, good. very good. But uh, <laughs> uh, you were, uh, and then what? What happened? It was between you and the other background. Devin Abner. 
Devin Abner were the two background actors, and you were in a lot of conference room scenes and in the background and stuff like that. I had done I had done the voice on the guy. Remember the time when you went down into the grain elevator. The grain elevator. I'm the voice from the grain elevator. Yeah, when he's looking for something yeah. fun to do with the with the yeah. Also on BJ's um, uh, thing, he wrote Diversity Day. Yeah, the, our AD. She thought because I got along with everybody so well. By the way, everybody loves me, and I love everybody else. So <laughs> that was just setting up that bit. Um, she thought I was part of the cast. She didn't know, so she came around. I was Phyllis, and she said, "All right, now you guys start ad libbing in the background, so we'll have the mump, the walla walla back there, you know. But we might pick up some of the stuff." And <laughs> Phyllis goes, "Oh, I went. That's okay." <laughs> <laughs> because for people who don't know, if you are a background actor and then you do a line or a featured bit, you all of a sudden you get paid a big chunk more money. Instead of getting $200 a day, you might get two, $3,000. That's right. Just for even saying a line or throwing a line in that they keep. That wasn't the idea because, we, because they approached me later and said, well, you've, you've been talking. I said, don't, you don't have to pay me. Don't worry about it. So they put me a little bit on the side. Same way for the grain elevator. They like cash? Credit. I don't know. I think it was uh, Shrewd Bucks or something like that. They paid you in Shrewd Bucks I think so. to do the voice I, of the I think, grain I elevator think so. uh, way before he was even invented. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was maybe it was actual. Beats. So they violated Screen Actors Guild oh, union stop. rules. Kelly Cantley. <laughs> no, it wasn't Kent Kelly. Zabornak. It was before Kelly. It was okay. the other girl. Lisa. Okay. What was her name? I can't remember her I name. don't remember life before Kelly Cantley. Yeah. She was the best. Kelly. Kelly was brilliant. She ran brilliant. a tight ship over at the office. So anyway, we, we, we digressed a minute. Uh, Devin, on the Halloween episode is when I made my bones. Yeah. And if I hadn't crossed the Rubicon, then they would have shot it again with Devin and given him a shot. Mm. And publicly, I'd like to say right now that I nailed it. And on... <laughs> The day at Friday, because we aired on Thursday, correct? Devin was a hobo and you were a vampire. I was a vampire. And uh, I went in there and they, we had a six and a half page scene, which I worked backwards and forwards. And on the day, they said, we made some changes. Are you okay? And Steve went, yeah, I'm okay. And I had this sphincter pucker and this flop sweat going. I was like, oh my God. But I went back and I just said, you know, I'm here. I've done the work. It'll work out. And all of a sudden, I was playing hardball with Steve, just throwing fast. And all of a sudden, I would, forgot. I forgot everything. I was just in the moment with him. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I remember Greg Daniels coming up to us and saying, "Like, I feel bad, but we've got to fire someone, and it's either going to be Creed or Devin. Like, who do you think we should stick around?" And I was like, "I think you're going to get more laughs from Creed. Yeah, I think good, if you just want some, call. you want some hard laughs, like every once in a while, bring him in, non sequitur. He's going to." He's going to hit some home runs for you. And uh, that was a great, that was one of the many, many great choices that uh, Greg made as a showrunner. Because as a showrunner on a TV show, you've got to make constant oh, yeah. choices all the time. Like, is this the prop phone? Is this the prop book? How Can we buy the cat so we can hurt it? Things yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and keeping you on as a company and member. On. Oh, so I, I again I, I went on a little, little segue there. When we shot it and it aired. Yeah. On the day after I was at craft service and you and Krasinski came through and you saw me. You both came over to me. I don't know if you remember this or not. Mm -hmm. You don't remember, but they did. They came over to me, both you guys. You're taller, much taller than I am, and just grabbed me like this and gave me a hug. And you whispered, "You knocked it out of the park, buddy." And just like this, I get. I get messed up thinking about Come him. Man. Oh man, I love you. Oh. God, it was such a big, big. But that meant to me. Um, that meant so much to me mm. because all at that time, all I wanted was respect for, for for what I was doing. How hard all these years I worked to uh, to show to show that I can do this thing. You know, it was huge, huge. And 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 as a as a transition here, and folks, if you're watching, subscribe. Uh, and then type in your questions. We'll be able to answer your questions if you are a subscriber. Um, anything, Producer Karthik? Anything? Got some great, questions great questions are coming up. But before we go there, one of the great profound bounties of The Office was that you had always been singing and recording and performing. Yes. But because of the audience that found you because of The Office, you've had a second life Yes. Uh, rebirth yes. Yes. of your singer-songwriter capabilities. How many 
How many uh, albums have you released in the last 20 years? I'm, on, I'm releasing my 10th album as we speak. Amazing. Four albums with the Grassroots. These are 10 solo albums. 10 solo 10 albums. 10 solo albums. 10 solo albums. I just keep putting them out. And by the way, folks, it's not like I sit down and say, I'm going to write a song about this or that. There's, they're out there. Songs are out there. They're all waiting for anybody to take it if you can reach out and grab them. So once in a while, I'll sit there and all of a sudden I get my share. Yeah. Other songwriters get their share. I get the ones that are for me. And that's how I look at it. And yeah. I write them down. And that's, that's, how he, that's how it works. Yeah, yeah. And so you're plucking songs from the ether. Yes. The, the Greeks yes, exactly. would call it the muses. The muse, yes. You're tapping yeah. in the muse. It's a god that's inspiring you no, with I, a song. I believe it is. It's not you kind of no, laboring. No, no, no. Humble, um, humble. But you've been doing tours. You yep. go internationally. You've been to Scotland and Australia. England and, and Australia and, uh, and, and uh, Ireland. Yeah, Australia. You got to do Australia. South. You got to do South America. We'll see. I, 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 the people want me to bring my band to do like the album stuff too, but uh, it's more, uh, it's more easy for me just to go with my acoustic guitar. And yeah. Sing it. You know, this next album may or may not be just me with my guitar. It, so, it and folks who don't know, like, check out all of Creed's albums. Is it on your website? Uh, yes, it is. Creedbratton.com. 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 Check out all of his albums. They're fabulous. But if you haven't seen him live, I'm telling you, he is so great live. He owns the audience. Oh, it's true. He, of course, but there's a, you can hear a pin drop. He sings from his heart. He sings with great comedy. Um, he's just a natural performer. He's 97 years old, and he holds the audience in the palm of his hand. Creed Bratton, ladies and it's, gentlemen. It's the ginseng suppositories, I tell everyone. Ginseng you know? suppositories. Yep. So I, before we went live, I put one up as Pooper, and he's going to perform and sing for us right now. Oh. And then we're going to get to your questions. We're going right. to gonna get his guitar going, and uh, we've got our cameraman, Mike, coming over to adjust to camera. Thanks so much. I'm going to put that right there. He's got to stand up to get some nice I think this will be about sound. right here. You tell me what it sounds like. All right, folks. Looking good to me. On show. This is a brand new song uh, that I have. This will be for my 11th album. It's called uh, Find That Thing. I don't want to die But I seem to always try Push the limit See what's in it You're gonna find at the end At the end of the line What you think you're missing You ain't missing at all Find that thing that puts a light in your eye I think I started the song wrong. I'm gonna start again. I love that. We're, this is why we do it. We do it live. You're gonna find at the end At the end of the line what you think you're missing, you ain't missing at all. I was right. Find that thing that puts the light in your eye. I'm a little out of control. Not enough to close the door. Just right. Just right. Find that thing, folks. Remember the future. It slips up on you. And those distant dreams will be here soon. Push the limit. See what's in it for you. Find that thing. That puts a light in your eye Find that thing That puts a light in your eye 
I'm a little out of control Not enough to close the door Just right Just right I feel just right Just right Just right muck that one but I was actually correct and I just didn't I doubted it. well it's a new song folks brand it's the new first song. time people have heard it first live. time anybody heard it live first so, time anyone go. heard that song thanks for tuning in Creed it was gorgeous thank you thank you it's, a good it's song. so simple and so true and beautiful and kind of like you <laughs> except you're hideously ugly uh, folks right. Give it up. Time. Give it up out there in YouTube streaming land for Creed Bratton. Oh, thank you, guys. Look at that. Bravo, bravo. And uh, making some camera adjustments. Mike O'Brien behind the camera. Karthik Chan oh, Chanani. Uh, out here producing. And folks, tell your friends we're on live. We're going to be on live for another uh, 15 or 20 minutes taking your questions. Uh, as you know, I'm starting this new soul boom uh endeavor um i wrote a book called soul boom and i'm starting a podcast soul boom we're gonna have content here on this youtube channel we'd love for you to subscribe we're gonna have more creed thoughts live maybe we make it a monthly event um and i want to get into some more obscure creed thoughts here but we also want to hear from you subscribe and then that will enable you to write and leave questions and we're going to start digging into those questions right now. You ready, Creed? I am re ready, Rain. Karthik, what do you got for me? Moon and Tynes, I would like to hear from you both about one moment in the past when the answer to get over a fear was simply patience. Eins? Eins, E-I-N-Z. E-I-N-Z says, we want to hear uh, about a time when you've had a struggle or a fear and what you needed was patience to get over that struggle or that fear, patience. What do you thank you, Eins, for a beautiful question, Creed? What do you think? Um, I think that's probably the the basis for like Stoic philosophy, right? Okay. Uh, you're, we, we're we're not going to be able to control the, the future. We can only are only responsible for what's happening at this moment. We okay. all know this. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, what else can we do? Just be be patient. We're always trying to rush it, rush it, rush it. And if I look back at, at myself as a child, I was always pushing, 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 push the push the limit, right? Like the mm. song mm. song goes. But it's very, very, very true. Uh, if you just sit there and just let it unfold, have a little patience. It generally works out pretty good. I love it. Very wisely said, Creed. Ah. And yeah. now you. Yeah, I think. Uh, I go to the serenity prayer. Uh, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Mm. So you know what is in your control and what is out of your control. Yes. And I always come back to that prayer for, um, you know, it helps me not live as a victim because I know that there are things that I can do. There are things in my control. Yes. But at the same time, we have to release and surrender what's not in our control. So that leads us to patience. So what else we got, Kartik? Um, we've got, would Noel Phillips asks, would love Creed's advice on living such a long, fulfilling, happy life, a perfect example that even with its downs, it's never too late for it to get turned around again. Um, who, who from? Noel Phillips. Noel Phillips says, would love some advice from Creed about how to live uh, such a happy, long, fulfilled life and what else? Um, and a perfect example that even with its downs, it's never too late for it to get turned around. And even when it's, when it's downs, and he's had plenty of downs, it's never too late for it to get turned around. This man was discovered as an actor in his early 60s, <laughs> folks. I'd been working before, but but not, not as big as yeah, the office. You broke. Yeah. You broke. I broke, I, broke, I broke big on the office. You broke big. Um, what's the question again, Noel? <laughs> 
<laughs> secret to a long, secret happy to a life. Long life. You know um, what? I get to do, and I've always never had a, a B plan. I was always going to play music. I was always going to act, as I said, as I told you before. I stayed in class. I did. So if you do what you love from your heart and you feel that energy coming up through your feet and, and from here and from here and you're there in the moment, uh, that I guess always gets back to that, just accepting, accepting uh, what the big guy gives you. What, you're, you're, it'll be to work out fine. And what's the lyric from your song? Uh, find that thing that puts the light in your eye. So you found that thing that put the light in your eye yep. as a musician yep. and then as an actor. And, an actor. and, and both. Yes. You stuck with it. Through. Yep. Now, yep. I'll just jump in and say, what mistakes did you make along the way? Besides drugs. Now, this is, this is a, a quandary, my friend, okay. that I go through sometimes about mistakes. Are there? Do there, we, in fact, make mistakes, or I, is it just I, learnings? Uh, well, I think the all everything that we ha that happens is uh, uh, going to get us like like the thing. I think I had to leave. I couldn't work on the catering company anymore because my back was hurting. I thought everything was over, but that actually lent me to the uh, the office. Yeah, I think that sometimes it's all written. I think there's a script, a master script, perhaps written for us. Not that you don't have your choices. Not that you don't have your yeah, choices to yeah. make, but sometimes I think if I hadn't done the stupid things that I had done and made some mistakes all along, the, I would have learned and I wouldn't be here right now talking with you, my friend. I love it. That's beautiful. It's possible. Other questions. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow to the Soul Boom YouTube channel. Then you can ask your questions. We're hearing from you now. I'm seeing lots of great comments and questions. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, Victoria Carnival asks, how can someone find spirituality when they've never had spiritual beliefs before? Do you have any thoughts on that? What's your spiritual... I don't know a whole lot about your spiritual My life. My spiritual life. My mother was in, uh, when I was a young child, in Unity Church and uh, things like that, mind over matter. So I was I was taught at that, at that we are all uh, children of God and there's no color there's no color. There's just a humans on the planet. And I, yep. well, I grew up. I grew up with that belief. That's a very Baha'i belief. It, yeah. And I and I well, I, I mentioned that I've kind of all back that that thing. Um, I'm I've been all over the place. A very eclectic, uh, autodidactic <laughs> as far as spirituality was concerned. I never went to church, uh, but I've always known through my my gut what was the right way to go. And I've read extensively. I've meditated through since the 60s. And it kind of like, I wrote it when one of my songs says, Your mi my mind is my own church. And I kind of think that's probably the, the way I go. But for Victoria, what do you think is a, a path into, uh, into spirituality or towards spirituality? <sighs> Besides mushrooms? <laughs> Just, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kind of kidding. Well, uh, yeah, psychedelics kind of, are, kind of are often, uh, especially these days. Well, they've always been. They've you always know, been. Yeah. Portals to a greater consciousness. I don't tend to uh, agree. I don't think you need to do. I don't think uh, you need drugs to or psychedelics no. to tap into, you know, a transcendent mystical experience. But a lot of people swear by it, and I know a lot of atheists that took ayahuasca and saw, experienced something mm -hmm. greater than their own mental capacity and have op embraced some kind of spiritual path. Yes, yes. I think we all have a, a truth button in us. And mm. I think if someone says something to us, it'll register yay or nay, pretty much. If you trust, if you trust who you are and that you're grounded enough, I think if someone says something, it's gonna be, you're gonna go, well, that's bull. Or that's, oh no, that's from a higher energy. So I think if you trust your feelings on this and you're grounded and self-aware, you you you'll, you'll discern this on your own. I love it. What's the weirdest thing you ever saw on acid? <sighs> well, the weirdest thing I saw, I did see was when everything was here and everything's just dissolved. 
everything came apart and I was flying through the vortex and I wasn't, I, I, th I thought at that time that their time didn't exist. Time is, is just a man-made, <laughs> it is, it's a man-made thing. Time, I think, is just a solid uh, continuum and we travel through time. Uh, I, saw, I saw everything fall apart and like a jigsaw puzzle, assemble itself again in front of my eyes, you know. Yeah. You're to hear, folks, only on Creed Thought Lives on the true, Soul though. Boom YouTube channel. I love it. Um, what else we got? We want to hear from you. Subscribe to our channel. There's going to be podcasts on here and other shows. Um, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. What questions we got, Kartik? Arumi Takeda asks, how do we balance the pursuit of our dreams and the pursuit of self-development while valuing and embracing what we already have? Good question. What's the name? Harumi Takeda. Harumi Takeda says, how do we balance what? The pursuit of our dreams the pursuit, and the pursuit of self-development. The pursuit of our dreams and the pursuit of our self-development while? Valuing and embracing what we already have. Valuing and embracing what we already have. So it's that balance between aspiring mm -hmm. toward you know making ourselves something greater, richer, uh, pursuing our dreams, but also being grateful for what we have. What do you think? Any Anything come to mind, Creed? That's a really very convoluted question. Good one, a good one, but convoluted. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll take it first. Take, I'll say, I'll say um, that uh, it's yes is the answer. Like <laughs> it's, it's yes and like, so we're not always in pursuit of something outside of ourselves and greater in our hopes and our dreams and, and becoming better versions of ourselves but we're also reveling in what we have and it's you know how do you find that balance you just got to tinker with it i think gratitude yes, is i was going to say is that is the most helpful lesson here because oftentimes i get into like why don't i have that i want that this isn't working out for me i'm discontent with that how come this person doesn't do what i want what why is this screwing up you know, I'm always in, in that mode and gratitude grounds me into, I'm so grateful for Creed, I'm grateful for my crew, I'm grateful for this podcast, um, I'm grateful that I'm gonna be taking a trip next week, I'm, uh, I'm grateful for the protein bar that I just ate and it, it, it keeps me relishing what I have. Gratitude, I'm just gonna reiterate that. That is, every day I get up, every day I wake up and go through my abolitions and, and uh, my exercise and stuff and I give thanks for everything. But you were triggering me off and I went off just a little bit. Um, people sometimes uh, pray, and I'm not saying prayer, prayer isn't good, or, or uh, hope, but if you kind of think about it, prayer and hope could be construed negatively because you are, you're waiting for something outside yourself to mm. come in and correct. When you, if you have faith that you're doing the right thing, if it feels, if it feels right and, and you're doing, doing the right thing, it's going to feel right. It'll feel, you'll feel a, a disease. You'll feel this ease in, in your stomach mm. right here mm. if, you're, if you're not doing something like this. So sometimes just be in the moment, have gratitude and trust that uh, the right thing is, because I've always, even when people used to come to me, <laughs> relatives, when I was saying I was gonna be in a rock, a rock band, and they'd go, you know the percentages of people that, that make it? It's 0.000001%. You better have a B plan. You better think about something. Even the people you love, your friends, they love you, but they'll try to talk you out of it. Why? Some people might say they're trying to bring you down, you bring you down to their level, and other people might say they're just trying to, you know, warn you of bad things to happen. If you know, if you know something's going to work out right, then you know no one can talk you out of it. So uh, give thanks. Uh, don't wait for something outside of yourself to intervene. Uh, do the work and drink a lot of water. <laughs> Stay hydrated, folks. Stay hydrated. I know. I saw Tanya Real asked if Creed was married. Um, he's single, folks. He's single. He's... 97 years old, he's got, a, he's got a lot of cash in the bank from being on a TV show, so he's a very eligible bachelor. Why don't you go on The Golden Bachelor? I, I, Creed Bratton on The Golden Bachelor. What do you think, folks? 
<laughs> Would you vote for that? <laughs> the golden, the, like we might remember the golden shower. You know about this. You know about the Golden Bachelor, right? I don't. It's the Bachelor dating show. No. Only the dude's like in his 70s. Really? Well, they're young. Youngsters did. No, and he's dating older women. It's all. What, the 70 year old guys? What are they, cadavers? He's the guy in the seventies is dating women in their late fifties and their sixties. Oh, I thought you said he would. The it's guy called the, the Golden Bachelor. Women. He doesn't even know. I don't know a lot of things, Rain. Uh, I think you'd be great, uh, but you're not married. Were you ever married? Yeah, twice. I have kids. You know that. Yeah, I know you have kids, yeah, kids but you can have kids without but, being married. No, I've been married twice. You know. Okay. Seven. What happened there? Well, there was this. You, this, you fuck this. it up. Yeah. How? How? Um, well, I don't think I fucked it up necessarily. I think that was, they're both seven years. They talk about the seven year itch. Okay. I believe that people talk about having a soulmate, that okay. someone comes into your life yeah. and will be your soulmate. They're, they're, they, they compliment you. You're my soulmate. Fuck off. And in old, in old days, uh, <laughs> when, when people used to think that when you get older, people, you start looking alike, I think that's true. Mm -hmm. But I wrote this song on the out the sh forgot which album it is one of one of them yeah called heart of darkness and my friend billy harvey and i wrote it and we wrote that to discuss soulmates people come into your life maybe for a week maybe for a month maybe for a year to help you with spiritual growth yeah mental growth emotional growth maybe yeah. or maybe just here in the, the material world growth but when they're done, when you've got all, you've assimilated all that you need, they don't need to be there anymore. Some people say, well, I'm gonna stick married because this is the right thing to do. But sometimes they need to move on to other people to help them. And we may need to move on to other, other people to help them. And so I think I just uh, was through teaching those women what they needed to know. <laughs> Have you ever had your heart broken, Creed? Oh gosh, yes. Have you? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I had a girlfriend in, uh, I worked on this movie, Cast a Giant Shadow, in Israel in 1964, with Kirk Douglas, Yul Brenner, John Wayne, Frank Sinatra, this movie, and I was an extra on this film. And I fell in love with the director's daughter, and we went off to the Greek islands, and uh, had a two-week thing around a Vespa, and drinking wine, and swimming in the, the Mediterranean there, the Aegean, I should say. Yeah. And she left to go back to school, and I had to go. Then I had to go back and sign in for the for the draft. And when she left, I felt I felt it was over. I, I just had this ache. I, I laid awake at night, just turning and tossing, and, yeah, in pain, physical pain. Heartbreak is so much worse between like when you're young, sixteen and twenty five. Like in that range, That's heartbreak is just it threatens to rip you apart. I thought I thought it was going to yeah. be destroyed. I thought I was going to die. Um, Karthik, what else we got? Who's that from? Um, How has your spirituality changed over the years? Um, from from Ashley. I, I think, Ashley, that my spirituality has changed basically like my, my, my music and my, uh, my acting. Uh, less. I, I, less is more. I get simpler and simpler. I try to find the, the truth of the matter by being as simple and, and not being convoluted, not trying to frill, make a uh, whatever, silk purse out of a sow's ear kind of thing. Mm. I, uh, well, I, I said earlier, my mind is my own church. I sit there and I don't look outside myself anymore. I meditate and if I'm in a nice place, I'll carry that nice energy through me, with me th through the whole day. So, and it's, so I'm not looking anymore i'm just kind of i accept that what i have right now is uh working and uh if something comes along and touches me here or here but i'll open up to that for sure but i'm not looking right now oh stop it oh nirvana he is the t the claw the claw got me uh casey rhodes says how can we be more like creed Shave your head, <laughs> get weird glasses. Get those ginseng suppositories. Put some ginseng suppositories in your the little That little snapper, by the way, doesn't like it in the beginning, but kind of looks forward to it after a while. <laughs> okay. I think say, I think lose a, a filter. So you lose a filter, you just say 
Like you have a thought and thought just comes out of mouth. Yeah. And there isn't a filter between oh. thought and mouth. So one day uh, when we did the uh, the scene where we're in, in the, we were always in the conference room. And remember the scene where I go, Carnaval. And you killed, you died on Carnaval. And I saw Steve, I thought Steve was up, kind of upset because it was a long, long day. And I felt bad that I kind of let that, put that tag in at the end. So I went to Greg and I said, because I don't ad lib that much on the show. I, and I said, D was that too much? And he said to me, look, he said, don't ever judge, sense, don't, I don't want you ever censor yourself. If you feel anything, I want you to let it out. Trust me, don't, don't do that. Just let it out, let it out. And I think that's really good advice sometimes, unless you're going to hurt someone's feelings, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Good. If your aunt comes in from the, the, the beauty parlor and her hair is purple and she says, how does it look? You're going to say, it looks great, Annie. You're going to, you're going to say that. <laughs> you're going to say that. Wayward Freak asks, I'm getting married on 4 2024. What advice do you have for a long, uh, healthy, and spiritually enriched marriage? Well, first of all, you're getting married on 420. 420, mm -hmm. marijuana day. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is that, maybe that's why he's a wayward freak. Yeah. But, um, uh, go All right. ahead. You're gonna get married, good luck. Don't do it. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I th Listen, my friend, what, this is advice that I that I should have known earlier with, with, with women. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh, don't feel that you have to mansplain guys. You, don't, you have to be the guy and explain stuff to them. Listen, listen real. Look them in the eye. Take it in. Let it absorb. If you're not there and you're off thinking about your fantasy football or something, they'll know it. So be there. Listen. Yeah. Sometimes that's the most important thing. Well, I think you 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 make a good, good point. I think sometimes with partners, we feel like we need to fix things. Yes. So they come and they're like, "I'm upset by this, and my boss did this, and my car and thing," it. and they, they're like, "Okay, what you're gonna do? You're gonna say this to your boss, and you're gonna do this, and why don't you do this?" And the, and, and that's not what a partner nope. wants. Nope. They want empathy and validation, listening, kindness, and way more than like fixing things. Little little things more than big gifts. Little oh, things on a yeah. daily basis. Uh, you turn the covers back or you, you make your bed, you put the toilet seat. You don't need to out. buy them a no, pet you don't need, baby rhinoceros. You don't, you don't you can, have to right. do that stuff. Little mm -hmm. things add up to a lot more than a big big things. Yeah. Uh, someone said, uh, <coughs> I figured it out. There's a reverb on Creed's mic. No, there's not. I, 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 I do that with my voice. I don't know. Is there a reverb on my voice? What's that? Cars. It's the cars. Oh, cars. cars. Okay. Um, on the marriage question, Thabi says, what advice would you give to someone who swore off dating and marriage because of a failed 18-year marriage? Is there hope? What's his name? Thabi? Thabi. Thabi says... Uh, he gave up on love and romance after an 18 year marriage. How can we give Thobby some hope and, and love for finding love again? What do you think? Thobby, that, that makes me sad, my friend. Sorry uh, about that. Yeah, it's, we're, it's we're, really hard. I know Rain and I are both sad about that, but don't give up on love, as they say. You don't, you don't, because that's the thing that keeps makes it all worthwhile. We're not, we don't Isn't have. Isn't that, that a David Soul song? <coughs> don't give up on us, baby. It, David Soul. Yeah. Did you really date yourself with that one? You yeah, know? David Soul from the seventies. <laughs> Starsky and Hutch. Love. He was Hutch. Love is. How about love is all you need? Okay. Yeah, but Sing it's it. true. Sing it. Love. Love, love is all, all you need. need. It's Bob Dylan song. Is right? that a Dylan? Yeah, it's a okay. Dylan song. All right, that's enough. Love, 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 love. What else? Maddie Lederman asks, if you could go back in time and undo a mistake you made that affected others, would you do it? Nadia Lieberman says, if you could go back in time and undo a mistake that you made that, that affected others negatively, would you do it, Creed? You've made a few mistakes in your day. Is wow. there one that you wow. can list? I don't know about undo it because it can't be undone, but if you go... And you make some mistakes, like I made mistakes with, with certainly with, with alcohol and drugs back in my younger days. And when you go through that thing, you have to go and apologize to all the people. You, you, you make you amends. Go, you and make amends. Mm -hmm. So I, I did that, and that I felt better afterwards. 
Mm -hmm. I certainly felt better. Mm -hmm. I felt I got it If you could go back in a time machine, was there anything you did to someone? No, because again, uh, I don't play that game because I wouldn't, if I wouldn't be here. Yeah. I wouldn't be here. It might change the whole, the whole domino thing. So no, I, I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Um, Sasa cool. Jovic asks, any thoughts about lucid dreaming and how and if it affects and facilitates spiritual growth? Yes, I know. I Sa Sasa Jovid? Jovicic. Jovicic. Sasa Jovicic says, any thoughts on lucid dreaming? Is it real? Does it affect spirituality? Have you had any lucid I dreams? I have. I actually, uh, do you know the Mind Valley people? No. No, there's a, there's a core of people who uh, have... Uh, they educate you into memory and lucid dreaming. So I took a 30-day lucid dreaming class, and I've had, uh, I've had uh, back in the day, uh, in the 60s, uh, <laughs> standing there in Montana one night at midnight, and I had I'd been fasting and stuff. Kund the Kundalini come up through my my feet, and I've had I've had just most incredible <clears throat> euphoria. And and thinking, knowing this wasn't a flashback from the acid. It might have been, okay. It might have been, but, but it seemed to me like like the like the God was talking through me. What God, whatever name you want to put on it, so what was, was talking this, to me. What was so, it saying? And then after that, after that uh, experience, I still doubted. I still had, would have doubts, even with something that profound mm. affecting me, and it was higher than any drug or anything I've ever experienced in my life. And I knew that this is not all there is. There's there's this cosmic thing going on that we're all connected to. So I had some lucid dreams after that. And I'm jumping around again, you know, tangentially. I uh, took the class. I went for 30 days. I would, Every day I would go around, I'd look at my hands. Because the dream, lucid dreaming, you look at your hands all day long. You look at the lines in your, your palms of your hand. And you, mem you memorize them. And so at night, when you're dreaming, if you if you're in a dream at night, this is how you do it. If you're in, and you all of a sudden in your dream, if you can get cold of your consciousness in the dream, you bring up that hand, and you look at that hand, and all of a sudden everything will solidify. And wow! I have, yeah. And that shows you that you're really alive in your dream. You if you are, can see yes. your lines in your hand in your dream. Yes. Yeah. And I had that experience. I had. I stayed up on the last night. I woke, set the alarm, woke up at 5.30, stayed up, excuse me, 3.30 in the morning, stayed up for an hour, walked around, went back to sleep before I did it, looked at my hands again. You play the Columbo method. You look around and you're going, am I in a dream? Am I in, is this a dream? Is this real? Is this a dream? Is this real? Is this a dream? All day, all, so I was doing that for an hour, went back to sleep, and there I'm in this dream. You were in it, uh, Steve Carell. We were all walking along the street into a to a auditorium or some kind of award thing, and I'm walking through the uh, the the corridor, following everybody. And I saw a woman up in the balcony. I said, "Hey, I'm in a lucid dream because I got a hold of it. I got I got a lucid dream." And I said, "I want to meet my shadow. I wanted to meet the evil things that have been holding me back all my life." And she looked down from at me, Rain, and she said, "You're not ready." And I went, um. How about a um, a mediator? How about a mediator? And she said, and she looked at me like this. All of a sudden, three women came, and they were they were just incredibly beautiful. And they said, "We've been waiting. We're so glad to see you." And I went, and my heart, and I was just filled with this light. And I followed them to this block, this obelisk in the middle of the room, of solid material. And they went, foo, foo, foo. they dove down in. I followed them down like this. I got up to about right here, and stuck solid. Panicked in my dream. Panicked. Couldn't follow him anymore. <clears throat> That's an amazing dream. Pulled it out. They came back again. I said, you're moving too fast. I can't keep up with you. They said, well, you've, you've got to move fast. <laughs> and then they climbed up this ladder, and they just disappeared, and then I woke up. But, yeah, that's... So I've had lucid dreaming. Now, dream three women yesterday. could be the three muses. Three beautiful goddess women being your guide... Those could be the, the muses. I like this, Ray. See how good this guy is? Yeah, yeah. Well, we got to wrap it up here soon, right? Yeah. Uh, Shoot, gotta, I'm having, we're just warming up. Office yes. Um, so Brandy wants to know, um, wait, where did it go? I want to... um, how much 
much of your lines were improvised, Creed, and how much of it was uh, characters that you came up with? I'm not like my good friend here on, on my left, or Steve Carell. Uh, I'm, I w at the time, I didn't have the confidence for, to, to do that stuff. So, truthfully, over 90% of the office was uh, scripted. For myself, I took, I took the lines and tried to make them as real as possible so that they, didn't, they seemed like I was scanning them off, but uh, no, they were, they were all they were scripted. I sit up a little bit. They are all scripted. Um, Maybe yeah, I, I would say 80% of what I said was scripted, about 20% Yeah, you did, but was, you did far more than yeah, the I did rest a lot of us. Yeah, I improvisation. Yes. Yeah. What was yeah. your favorite scene to shoot together? What was our favorite scene to shoot together? Um, I know we shot a few together. We I remember did. being back at the desk. The one probably were the... Uh, we, uh, I'm telling you about the chicken, and you said no. You're thinking about a chicken. I said the the dead truck was decapitated. I'm trying to tell you a story. Man, I, a man can stay awake for several several hours after his head's been cut off. You said no. You're thinking about it. You're thinking about it. What did I go? What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good line. That was, that was a good one. Mm -hmm. And when we did the um, the vampire stuff, when you I was you were trying to get me in to help you uh, kill vampires. Okay. We had, some, we had some scenes like that. Okay. Together. Yeah. Yeah. I had, uh, I'll tell the people that I had an idea for, I pitched the writers a Creed episode. Really? I pitched the writers that we start our office like a regular office and everything's the same, but then Creed turns to one of the cameras and is like, and he takes the camera and he's like, come with me. And the B story of the episode is Creed just taking the camera crew on his life and so he's making sandwiches and handing them out to the homeless he goes he's living behind the he's actually living in the warehouse and he's got like a hydroponic laboratory there <laughs> and he you know he's got a safe and he takes a gold bar and he goes and pays off like a drug gang and you just he, he doesn't even talk but he's just taking one of the camera crew one of the cameras on this whole i like, love that like dark, weird, subterranean creed journey through what his, he's decided to show his real life uh, to the crew. I had a, was talking with Greg and uh, people are always you know, suggesting that I do more. And I, I, I broached that you know, with, with him uh, uh, once and, and we were talking, finally he said, I think, I think it's working, I think it's working. And I, in, in retrospect, yes, if I'd have done more, we might've got tired of the guy. And I think just a little, just it was just you, enough. You're hungry for just him. Just enough to just, just you want, enough to you see, want a to couple see. pops. You want two, three, four pops of Creed per episode. No, a couple it's, talking it's perfect. Heads. It's perfect. Yeah. It's just the way it was. It's yeah. perfect, folks. Yeah, folks, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, this has been a wonderful 45 minutes, 50 minutes with you. Creed thoughts live. We got to do this again. Will you do this again? Uh, yes, of course. I have, I was just saying I was just having fun toward the end. I know. So relaxing, and know? we'll come back. We'll do this again. You'll play more music. Another song. We'll take yeah. some more, and this is great. I might want to do one that I already know, so I can get through it. There you go. There's a, there's a thought. You played it beautifully. Oh, I want to do it one more time to get it right. Uh, folks, thanks for subscribing to the Soul Boom uh, YouTube channel. Pick up a copy of the book. Paperback's coming out soon. Uh, it'll be a little cheaper for you, cheapskates. And uh, <laughs> subscribe to the Soul Boom podcast and uh, there's going to be more shows here on the Soul Boom YouTube channel. Kartik, Chainani, my producer, uh, my right hand man. What do you got for me? What else do I need to say? Creed, you have anywhere we can listen to your music? Creed, you got a new album. A new album. We're going to hopefully gonna... get this Creed memoir going very soon. Tell me about your music. The uh, the, the new album is called Dao Pop. T A O P. -O Dao Pop. I, I sent love you it. the uh, Kartik. I sent you the uh, the cover. Yeah, we're gonna uh, put we, that on there. We're gonna put that up there. I can't really. We we're, it's so brand new right now that we have to, we don't know the release dates yet. So perhaps okay. later you'd be so kind to do that for me. You can follow you on Spotify. You can follow me on Spotify, and Apple Music, Apple Music, any any place. How much you get from Spotify? Just you know, like a dollar three eighty a song, something like that. No, but how much? Like in a year, how much did you make from Spotify last year? I don't know. I don't know. How do you not know that? Because my business manager knows all this Wait, stuff. Will you ask your business manager? Yeah. Is it fourteen dollars, one hundred and forty dollars, fourteen thousand? No, I know it's 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 good. It's good. 
You, you, know? ma- you make a little but, money. But you, I, you, we make more, all entertainers. Uh, so, Selling the CDs, you make the most. No, live performances. Live performances. Live performances. You, Do you have any live performances coming up? You can find all this information at creedbratton.com. Right now, I'm uh, in, because it's pilot season, so I'm in town doing whatever you else is doing, running around auditioning for yeah. stuff, you know, right now. I was going to Ireland and England and stuff, and I canceled that because my manager said I shouldn't be in town. There's people that want to talk for stuff. You know how it goes. <laughs> you, he knows. Right on. He knows how it goes. I know. I know how it goes. You do. Uh, thanks. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks to Creed Bratton. V- uh, thanks. Tell your friends to come over here and subscribe at uh, the Soul Boom YouTube channel. We'll have more of these shows. Angela Kinsey's going to be on very soon. Hate Other her, office cast. Her. She's a total Tor- bitch. Horrible person. Uh, thanks so long, everyone. We love you. Take care. Thanks for having me, Ray. And I mean that in the, you know, it's not a euphemism.